let's have a look at the Faro Focus uh, or the Faro Road Scanner C then, the Road Scanner Compact. If we have a bit of a look at these slides, you can see on the right hand side there, there's a picture of the unit. So the way that the system actually works is obviously this is going to be mounted on, on, on a vehicle or even a train if you wanted it to. And using the um, GPS and Aplanix inertial navigation system, which we obviously the inertial navigation system along with the computer can be housed in the base unit. We also there have at the top of the system, we have an aidable camera. OK, and as you can obviously see, we have two Faro Focus laser scanning units, either an X series or an S series, depending on what you would what you have, what you would need um, to capture the data. So it's very much a combination of technologies that we're putting together to provide this system. Um, as I mentioned just before there, to so take off a software for the post processing of the data and things, which we can, we're going to have a small look at. And they obviously do do installation, training and warranties and things to go with the system. So that's a little bit of a look at the system. If we look at that again, now with the Farofocus S uh, units on, to, on, on there, one thing to mention is if you did want to purchase one of these or want to use one of these uh, systems, the we do need to have a Farofocus S unit that actually uses or is enabled for helical mode. So it's a specific um, conversation you would need to have a, have with your, uh, your local sales guy um, about that actual specific unit. But it works with either of the systems and also the S70 up to the S350, it's not too much of a problem. It's essentially the same base that we're going to connect onto the system. Okay, so mobile versus static scanning then. Obviously, most people who own a focus, Faro Focus unit or have used um, uh, laser scanning uh, technology in the past will know the way a 3D static scan works. Um, where obviously the unit's rotating, it's sending out a laser beam um, in a sort of three or five degree uh, field. And obviously that generates a 3D point cloud. Okay, it's fairly standard methodology as people who uh, know terrestrial scanning will be aware of. However, when we do that in mobile mode, or when we are going to use a furrow focus in mobile mode, you can see the way that it works is actually we use that as a profiler. So effectively, it is scanning one line at a time and fixed in a, in a, in a sort of in, in a rotation mode. It's fixed in a static position. So each of those scan lines is obviously a sequence of points in, in a plane of 2D coordinates. And those scan lines are then georeferenced or assigned against a trajectory that is calculated by the uh, the the uh, the mobile mapping system effectively but a combination of the gps and the and the imu so just to show you how that works then so standard uh Faro focus would rotate and send out a laser beam however in profiler mode that would not be the case that unit would be static fixed again onto that system and send out a beam of laser points obviously and as we move along with no horizontal rotation, as we move along that, that path or that trajectory, um, it generates a helical so, a sort of point cloud. Okay. So just a quick video to show you how the system or the system running, you can see it was mounted on top of a vehicle there and the system's obviously running with those two units fixed. And then the data, the type of data we can capture from this is, is as you can see on the screen here now. So just, showing you there on the video this unit mounted to the top of a, of a car we can do this as a permanent or permanent or a temporary installation this video is actually showing the uh, system mounted on a vehicle outside the Soteco offices in Bologna okay but as you can see we've got a GPS at the front there G GNSS unit at the top and at the, at the back but if we do want to we can combine the different methods using the the Faro focus system so if we do want to do a kind of stop and go scan project we can do that we can take the system off the Zateco unit and we can actually do a static scan wherever we need to to sort of fill in gaps or collect additional data so just to show you how that works you can see um a permanent or a temporary installation some of the data we're going to show you now was from a temporary installation which we mounted on, on my own car um but just to show you there now the way that it normally would work is you can fit that with a, a sort of a, a, a standard toolbar and, uh, and maybe a cross member just to hold that in place and obviously assign that first GNSS unit at the front. So what, what we're actually capturing is 2 million points per second, okay? Because we've got two units 
two scan units running at 96 hertz, so 96 rotations per second of the mirror. So we're capturing 200 scan lines per second. The Ladybug camera is capturing six different five megapixel images. Okay, and that and this combination of technology can give us an absolute accuracy of about one to two centimeters and a relative accuracy of one to seven millimeters. Okay. And the distance range, like I mentioned before, depending on the unit that you have, 70 to 350 meters, depending on the unit you have. So what do we mean about the accuracy then? So absolute accuracy is very much in terms of the trajectory itself. So to read those lines out on the screen, absolute accuracy is the degree of departure from truth, usually measured in the difference between the true ground coordinates of a point and its mapping coordinates. So very much a case of how accurate is that trajectory that it captures in the real world. And we can do that, we think, to about one to two centimeters. The relative accuracy, however, is then going to be the departure from the truth in terms of the actual scan points themselves. So obviously we have a trajectory, but then we have to map our scan points to that trajectory. And the relative accuracy of that is then what we think we can achieve, maybe one to seven millimeters, depending on the range and the IMU that's actually used.